playing in the same city that assistant coach Dejan Milojevic passed away in for the second time in a week, through only three quarters, the Warriors posted a monster 120 points. However, for the final 4 minutes and 37 seconds of the game, the Dubs failed to record a field goal, an utter collapse for the second time in as many nights for this team, with the Dubs blowing a lead to the LA Clippers a game prior, was propelled by Steve Kerr letting his veterans play through that disastrous stretch against Utah, as opposed to calling timeout. Since they couldn't hit a shot or grab a board for minutes when it mattered most, it must have been Milojevic's spirit being with the basketball gods that allowed the Dubs to do just enough defensively to seal the deal and gain a crucial chunk of momentum, entering a 7-day All-Star break. Flashing back to this past January 18th, when at a Warrior Team dinner, ABA League legend and Warrior assistant coach Dejan Milojevic would suffer a heart attack before tragically passing away the morning after. Beloved by everyone around him, with a nation of fans in his hometown of Belgrade, Serbia paying tribute, the great Indeki having left a mark on the Warriors he coached has been evident based off how the teams left their heart out on the floor in honor of him, clearly having been an under-the-radar mentor for the Dubs in their 2022 championship run. Now, DM's legacy is living on, as the Dubs are an NBA 6th best 9-4 since the devastating day in which Dayon passed away. Regarding the most recent Warrior W, it wasn't simply down the stretch that the opposing Salt Lake City attack proved this Jazz team's better than their record. A 13-3 Jazz run in the opening quarter saw the speed and athleticism of John Collins pick apart Golden State in the pick and roll. We'll get back to the collapse, but aside from that opening quarter jazz run and of course a dominant fourth quarter, the Dubs did have control throughout, as they built up just enough of a cushion which they used every bit of. Right off the bat, the action on the Dubs first bucket showed you Kerr's playbook ingenuity. What initially seems to be a Steph on-ball screen turns into a UCLA screen after Kaminga swings it to Draymond, with Colin Sexton pinned and Keontae George confused as to what's going on, JK widely cuts around the Curry UCLA screen, which opens up a lane for him to get to the basket, before Draymond laces a dime between Kessler and George, and JK receives then finishes to execute the play. The Dubs had a great finish to 3 out of 4 quarters in this one, closing the first on a 12-6 scoring run, the second on a 17-10 scoring run, and the third on a 20-12 scoring run. Even when things got dicey in the fourth quarter, in terms of the leadership from the head of the snake, Stephen Curry, Wardell II displayed great energy in this game, finishing with a 16-10 double-double, but it was just as vocally Steph's communication and upbeat body language that stood out as contributive. Draymond Green had a starter most 23 points. Green shot 9 for 14 from the field and 3 of 5 from 3 point range, also racking up 4 steals and 2 blocks on the defensive end. In the late first half, Draymond's Patrick Mahomes as quarterbacking was prevalent in the half court, setting up consecutive buckets. This split action where Clay slips to the hoop sees Green thread the needle through Collins and the outstretched arm of George to set up the Thompson finish. Facilitating from the top of the arc, Green then hits Clarkson with a crossover while signaling Kaminga to the basket and winding up for this nasty one-handed bouncing bullet through traffic before the improved left hand of Kaminga executes the play. Meanwhile, the early scoring and throughout the entire game hustle for the up-and-coming all-star rising star Brandon Pajemski was game-changing in Salt Lake City. Pods finished with 13 points, 8 dimes, 6 boards, several charges drawn, and he made 3 of his 7 deep range bombs. The night before, this kid was astonishingly twice as good as that. Against the Clippers, Pajemski posted 25 points, 8 dimes, and 7 boards. He also made all 5 of the triples he attempted. And while we did speak too soon about the John Beeline Michigan product and now Washington Wizard Jordan Poole being Stephen Curry's successor, the Herb Sendek Santa Clara product Brandon Pajemski could very well be Golden State's next franchise point guard once Stephen Curry retires. 
in comparison to Poole, Pajemski's almost nothing like him in terms of skill set. Three point shooting is the one thing they have in common, but it's Pajemski's defensive, hustle based, and high IQ approach that are the foundation to his game. I would say Brandon's work ethic, mental approach on and off the court, plus impulsive intelligence between the lines give him the ability to be much more consistent than Jordan Poole, with all due respect to a champion for the Bay Area in JP. However, for Brandon, his genuine selflessness, yet at the same time hardworking fierceness, gives him the ultimate likability factor. That humble aura is proven right before your eyes when Pajemski casually hits three-point buzzer beaters to close out a half without even getting the slightest bit of shocked or hyped, showing you the calm, cool, and collected trust that he has in his own craft that it goes without saying is continuously being polished. Brandon landing in the Warriors' lap at pick number 19 in last summer's draft was another blessing from the higher power as draft scouts didn't do their homework on pods nearly well enough. Mike Dunleavy will take it, though. What a draft steal for the rookie GM, as the kid MD selected is special. Moving on to Clay Thompson, and head coach Steve Kerr had success with subbing him in five minutes into the game, before replacing Curry with pods in the late first quarter. When speaking of Fitz and Kalena at the half, Clay was utterly upbeat when speaking about his new role, noting how coming off the bench gave him a quote-unquote clean slate. In three quarters, Thompson recorded all of his season-high 35 points, failing to score in the fourth quarter. Regarding his subpar season by his standards, Clay moving to the bench is the answer to the NBA's single-game record holder in both three-pointers made in a game and points scored in a quarter being more effective. ESPN's Kendrick Perkins said they should trade him a while back, as Perk's been trash-talking Clay seemingly on a weekly basis. A massive chunk of an entire NBA fan base that is Dub Nation has been spewing hate about Thompson's selfishness, bad shot selection, and bad defense. I've said in the past Kerr should consider other options in the depth chart without going too far, but some have been night and day more critical than your boy D Flo, going all in 08 LeBron style with no regard for human life on Thompson. We can't forget we're talking about a man in clay that has nothing to prove as a four time NBA champion, plus both an all NBA player and all NBA defender. However, while Thompson does have nothing left to prove, when he's playing with that added fuel to his fire, trying to expose his biggest critics by making those who've spewed hate about him without a second thought look dead wrong, that's when Clay's at his best. Many voices around the NBA universe, for the record not including myself, are confident in initiating narratives that write Thompson off as a washed up player after two typically career ending injuries suffered back to back several years ago. Those takes that don't seem to be slowing down anytime soon, give an all-timer and Clay extra motivation in the final quarter of the season and then into the 2024 playoffs. So to the ones who are paid to, keep hating. Bottom line is, in the right role and mindset, Clay can still be damn deadly. Led by Thompson, the bench was a major key in the Dubs final game before the All-Star break, as their entire starting five was below zero in terms of plus minus. But Sarich, Looney, Jackson Davis, Clay, GP2, and Quinones combined to outscore Utah by a staggering 37 when they were on the court. Meanwhile, the starters plus minus was set back because of the Jazz making their monster run down the stretch. Blowing leads has evidently become a major theme for this 2024 Warrior team, as while they did survive the most recent onslaught of a final stages run, their loss against the Clippers the night before was their 6th L of the year, in which they led by as many as 15 points. Last night against the Jazz, despite leading by 18 entering the final quarter, bad habits again caught up to the Warriors in Salt Lake. As Golden State failed to stay in the moment, got comfortable, stopped giving 100%, and got ahead of themselves mentally, allowing the young Utah Jazz to take control of the game in every facet. Their communication and positioning on the glass to go along with their shot selection and thanks to Kerr not calling timeout, their stamina, was all a complete and utter mess when it mattered most, which was abysmal to watch if you're a Warrior fan. 
You can't be thrilled about this win, but a win is a win after all, and the Warriors are a plus 500 team entering the break. It was a mess in the fourth quarter, but it's still worth noting how the Warriors stayed together just enough on defense to close the show, forcing John Collins to make this errant pass into the stands. After Curry hit a couple clutch free throws, Colin Sexton did miss a wide open triple which would have forced overtime, but sometimes the basketball gods are just on your side. Decky was with the Warriors on this night in Salt Lake. Having said that, leaking oil on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, in addition to his vets, Steve Kerr was obviously completely out of energy, as it was unacceptable how he refused to call timeout to quell Utah's momentum. Given in the front court, Draymond and Kavon's legs were heavy, I would have liked to see more Trace Jackson Davis, but I've come to the conclusion that Kerr will do the opposite of what your boy says when it comes to TJD, so I digress. If you enjoy my analysis, please subscribe to support this platform. Thank you so much. Comment or shout out question for today is, what do the dubs have to clean up the most post All-Star break to stop blowing leads? Pause to read today's winners on your screen. Your boy DFlow signing off.